everybody, Mike Verda. Welcome to Live Composing When You Don't Feel Like It, part two, the next day. Look, if you're anything like me, even when I write something that I think is pretty good, usually the next day I come back and listen to it, and I'm like, hmm, sometimes there's a little few problems, sometimes there's a lot of problems. And on a day like yesterday, when I was like all grumpy and not feeling like it, you know, I, I managed to get something out, but I just finished listening to it, and it's, uh, it's got some issues that I want to clear up. Um, so I'm going to do that, going to refine it a little bit, and then we're going to orchestrate the piece. Um, and uh, then in part three, we'll, uh, we'll actually perform. But I'm going to orchestrate it today. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks, which is why I have my colored pens. You'll see what that's about. So let's start at the beginning uh, just with the piece. And as I do this, I'm going to talk about why in this refinement process, I'm, I'm preparing myself for the orchestration. People ask a lot of times, um, you know, how do you orchestrate as though it was something separate from composition. And I believe that they're inextricably linked. And I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing is, um, um, I started the idea with something like and then I did. Well, right away, you know, one of the things I always like to do is I like to establish very clear patterns in the beginning. And starting with that, from that point on, I had done a very consistent thing where I had done the, the higher dissonance chord to the more consonant chord. And I had, I was, so from the very beginning, I did it opposite. So right, the first thing I heard was like, well, no, don't, let's, let's stick to the pattern that I obviously wanted to get to. So the very first thing I'm going to change in the idea is I'm going to start. Then I can go. And now it's following up. It's a more. So it's just following more of a, I'm establishing a stronger pattern in the beginning. But already, as I start to think about what I'm going to do for orchestration, um, the clues for how this is going to be orchestrated are already right in front of me. Just, I just have to look at where my instincts are for writing the piece. I'm up in this octave, and I'm, I'm, I'm not digging in. I'm using a light touch. And this obviously has a sort of, you know, quasi-mysterious to it. So I have to ask myself, okay, what instruments in that range, not down here, but right here in this range, what instruments can do these lines in a delicate way, in a delicate, you know, uh, conchi uh, 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 sort of mysterious way? Um, you know, well, I mean, it starts to limit itself. Up here, you could do it for trumpet, but it's high for trumpet. Trumpet's going to have to put some air into it. Horns, really, high F is as high as you'd go, so it's not horns. It's obviously not trombones. Strings, obviously violins are fine up here. So are the woods. And my, as I look ahead a little bit, so I'm already thinking, all right, so this is probably strings or woods, or maybe tinkly stuff, you know, celeste, could be piano. But I'm hearing violin, these are sort of lyrical lines, so that probably puts me away from celeste or piano or even harp. Although there might be supporting instruments, and we'll look at that as an idea once we start to see it orchestrated. But this is the point is, I've already l limited myself essentially to, it's one of two options. It's really gonna be something in the woodwinds, and if so, which woodwinds? Well, it's not gonna be bassoon. It's too high, really, for that. Um, you could do this on clarinet. It's high for clarinet, uh, not super high, it's fine. Um, but this range, personally, would be great, best for Oboe, super easy and clear for flute. Oboe and flute, very, very, just process of elimination, just based on where it is. And if I'm going to orchestrate, what I'm not going to do is assume that there's any other chords happening anywhere else. It's not going to be. I'm not going to have any chords here or any bass. No, how do I know that? Because I didn't play it that way. I wasn't hearing that. I wasn't. I didn't. Never in any of these iterations did I have an instinct to have my hands and supporting chords anywhere else. So there's no reason to add those. You don't need to do more. Take the cue from from what you're doing. Now, um, so I'm starting to think a little bit about orchestration. So I'm just going to have that in the back of my mind. It's kind of a woodwinds thing. So if I look ahead at the line.
Okay. One of the things about music, music is about contrasts in, in order to keep things dramatic. We try to do, everybody wants to do things that are epic now. But epic doesn't, big doesn't mean anything without small. Well, that's not true. You could have 15 horns and everybody playing really loud. Okay, yes, that would be loud. But without something quiet, if you just kept doing loud, loud, you know, epic, epic plus epic plus epic, it's just loud and boring. It doesn't get more epic. It just, it's just loud. You have to have a contrast to weigh something against. So as I'm refining this piece now, in every way I'm thinking about contrast. And look, what kind of contrast can we have? We can have high stuff and low stuff. We can have uh, dissonances and consonances. More tension and release, right? It's got a lot of tension in it, a lot of release. So that's another kind of thing. Um, colors can be contrasts. Think about the sort of square wavy sound of a, of a you know, round tone of a clarinet versus something nasal and biting like an English horn or an oboe. That's a contrast. Um, or uh, even in strings, like uh, tremolo strings that just have this sort of buzzing energy about them to when they're just playing arco, when they're just bowing the strings. That's a sort of steady, even sound. That's an interesting contrast. Um, so, uh, so, so at all times I'm thinking about and wanting to be moving my contrasts around in all of those ways. Quieter, louder, higher, lower, tonality, versus color versus color, color contrasts, technique contrasts. An open bell French horn horn is very different than a stopped one. I've got all these different ways in which I can continue to, to, to create contrasts and have tension and release and keep the colors fresh. So as I start to work this out, I'm thinking about this all the time. So I'm just telling you, and, and by the way, all of this is an extremely condensed version of, this is the stuff I talk about in the Hollywood Masterclass series. I have, the, what I'm doing now is I have about 10 hours of these tricks in, in the orchestration classes. But I'm giving you some of the basics so that you can see what the process is. But as I did this first line, which was my first, essentially, a, to me, all of that, even though there's, there's harmonic motion in there, I'm already thinking about contrast. It's almost, to me, I just hear that each one of those lines is spoken by somebody else. That's just what I'm hearing in my mind in order to, to move the interest along. So it's one voice that's going. And it's like somebody else says, oh yeah? What about this? Oh, that's a good point, so that's somebody else. And then a third somebody says, oh, I like that better. I'm gonna change the chords, I can do that. So I'm sort of hearing, I'm hearing that those voices should now move around. So I'm just gonna be thinking that as I go. And as a result, I'm also now thinking, well, it's if, if each one of those people is gonna say something, maybe, maybe, maybe the, the contrast, the drama can increase a little bit. Now, this is just what I'm thinking in my mind. Part of the way to do that is when you have chords up here, okay? What, if I asked you without looking, what chord is that? It's very difficult without, what chord is that without, it's very, it would be very difficult to know without looking. But if I play that same chord here, you're gonna say, well, I'm not sure because I don't have perfect pitch, but I know it's a major chord. It's much, if I play that same chord down here, it's harder to identify that as major. Where the range is, range is determines how sonorous and how uh, uh, meaty a chord is. This is the meat range, this is meaty. You can really tell the chords in here. Okay, this chords down here less so. You can still hear it. Up here, it gets real. So they're not, it's not, it doesn't register as much. So for me, what would be an interesting idea is to start with, since I've started here, this is where my hands first went and I'm not gonna rethink that, is what about if each line, I started to move the supporting chord element of it closer to the meat range. So like this, say the first line is just basically this, right? But then, as we go to this chord, instead of just that, what if I... So I'm, I'm supporting it a little lower. Now 
And then the third one, I move even lower. Okay, so, so you can hear it start, it almost feels like it's building, and I'm not actually doing anything, except I'm, I'm, using, I'm using orchestration as dynamics, almost. It's getting bigger, it seems it's getting bigger and fuller, and it's growing someplace, and truly all I'm doing is I'm moving the supporting chord elements of it closer to where the meat is. It's not as much meat up here, even with the same, even with the same, uh, uh, dynamic marking. And now, of course, even doing that is now starting to, to inform me more about the orchestration. We'll talk more about the actual orchestration as we go, but so this is, so this is what I'm thinking. That I'm thinking. I'm hearing that. And now what was the next line? Oh yeah, I think I'd done something. Um, contrast wise, I, I, my hand, I've been up in this range an awful lot is what I'm thinking. Um, I'm wondering if I can't, if I can't move, if I can't move down. There you go. Like, just move, move that line to something else. A little, just, just grow the piece. We've been up here a little while. Contrasts. Time for a little motion piece. So we're all up here. Yeah, that's something else, and that's already telling me something. That's like an answer. Okay, just did that. Did that. I did not do. My hands went to an octave. That's, this wouldn't be a single instrument in my mind. So that must be, there must be two colors going there. This is what it's telling me. Just based on what I'm doing, um, I'm, I'm learning from myself as much as composing. This is a weird kind of like almost metaphysical, <laughs> temporal, quantum physics thing, but it's what's happening. <laughs> composing using quantum physics. Temporal, okay, so here we go. Okay, so let me just look at what I did. So this line, I created a line. Again, look at the piano. I've been up, I've been using woodwinds, and now I'm suddenly playing in this area of the piano. Contrast. Well, first of all, yes, this could be more wind woodwinds. I could make this clarinet, but then I I haven't changed the colors at all. Um, so what colors do I have left? Well, I have strings, I could use strings. Let me go back for a second and think about the colors. Well, I don't wanna do orchestration yet. So anyway, let me just, maybe I should do these together. Maybe this would be easier, because I'm already thinking that way. Okay, let's do that. We'll just, before we continue, we'll just do this together. Let's put up the screen. I'm sorry, but I just, this makes me this, why segment this? Okay, so we started. I'm gonna just pick one. I'm gonna pick oboe. Now I'm gonna look at the orchestration for it. What am I doing for the chords of it? Um, is this a single line with a single in instrument? Or is this one of those chord, like, flute choir things? Well, I didn't play it that way. I didn't play it that way, so don't do that. Think of it instead exactly the way I played it. I play it with a single line. But I did have chords below it. So maybe that's woodwinds with strings playing the chords. Or maybe I can keep this purely woodwinds. These are choices. I'm gonna keep it purely woodwinds and here's how I'm gonna do it. And now here's where I'm gonna grab my colored pens. The, the red pen, for me, is the focus element. It's the most important thing that I want people listening to at a moment. That may change in the middle of a bar, but this tells me, the red pen tells me, this is where I really want people paying attention. 
The blue pen is the second thing. Remember, the brain can only keep track of two things at once. Really, it's three, but it's best to think in music in two. And black is just other shit that's happening. OK? So um, I'm going to pick oboes. Kind of plaintive. OK? And so for that, what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to write the notes. I'm just going to write, first of all, let's say there's a little lead in. There's going to be, this is a pickup to this, and this is slow. I'm not going to start right on one. I think I'm going to maybe start with something like that. Maybe, in fact, that's what I'll do with strings. Just octaves. Now, we're going to crash into something. I'll just talk about this for one second. We're going to crash into something as we do orchestration, which is that things on the piano sound very differently than they will when we orchestrate them. And there are some things, some of the really dissonant, bitey stuff in here just does not sound like it works on piano, and it totally, totally works uh, with... Uh, uh, with strings and, and when it's orchestrated. And developing that sensibility just is part of, you've listened and seen a million scores. It's like, it's like how do you know how to drive virtually every car? Well, because, you know, because the key's always going to be here, or it's going to be there, or the shifter's going to be here. It, you've just seen it. You can sort of work it out. So, um, so I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to start with, um, I'm actually going to start with just violins holding an octave. And since it's the very first thing that we're going to hear, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of, it's, it's, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just making, basically making a holdout, okay? It just sort of just, just, just tells me that goes through the bar. Okay. Now, um, on, so. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and here in my, this is my, this is oboes, just so you can see. It's probably, you can't see it, but I'll tell you. So oboes. Uh, so I'm just kind of, kind of, I'm just gonna. Not properly, but I'm just sort of marking dots for the general concept of it. Okay, don't even worry about the notes. If I was doing an actual full-on orchestration, then I would go ahead and take the time. But I'm trying to trying to get through the colors of this quickly. So what I'm doing is that to me is. That's where the focus is. That's the melody. And here in clarinets, because clarinets are pretty, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of just sort of indicate that they're going to be holding supporting chords. So what this tells me is right now, OK, and now at this point, strings are continue to hold. So I'm just going to. So now if I look at my score, I'm just sort of seeing the colors. So here we're going from nothing. We're hearing violins. And then our attention jumps to oboes here while they're playing the line. And secondarily, we may be picking up the clarinets holding chords. I just know that that combination is going to work well for a couple reasons. So the actual sound of it will not say, so here's what's happening with the strings, OK? And then we've got, already it doesn't sound like it's going to sound with an orchestra. Because violins are going to hold this very, uh, in fact, you know what? I'm going to make a little note here. Because I said sort of mysterious, so I'm going to make um, I'm just going to make this myself a little a little tremolo mark. They're just going to sit there doing this because it gives it some pregnant potential. Just so I'm going to have that. So this is telling me, okay, these are just starting. We'll ease into that. Then my tension's going to go up to here, and even though it doesn't sound necessarily like anything, this is going to work just fine. So I'll probably have probably have the clarinets going to stay out of the way of the melody, probably. I could hold them, but we'll see. I could probably do that. That's basically what it's telling me. Now, what did I do? So now I'm talking about a color change, some kind of color change. I talked about three voices, it's like three different people, right? Okay, should that, should that move to strings? Who should do this next line? Um, well, this, these chords to me, from, from just, I'd like to repurpose things. I'd like to move things around. I had contrasts. I had them doing some chords. What if I move the chords, the secondary element, to, uh, to violins? So I'm going to mark them as my secondary element here as we go into the next part. Uh -huh. Uh, just basically that. And it's just, this is my just sign for chords. And the melody, I'm going to move to 
flute. I haven't heard from flute. So I'm gonna mark it up here. Dun, 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 whatever, dun, 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 dun. Doesn't matter about the notes, just the idea. And this is telling me, this is telling me where my focus is. I'm gonna drop these guys. So there's only two things right now, which is fine. You don't have to have more than that. So we're gonna start, that's oboe. Then a nice color change, this will be pretty. Uh, flutes. Um, and I'm gonna keep the strings here. I'm not gonna double them or do any kind of thing else because let the flute be pure. Remember, the sexiest color is a pure one, a solo one. There's no reason for me to thicken out the chords with strings up there. The strings were doing this, now I'm gonna move them here. Let the flute, so this would be flute and strings, also a very common, this will work really well. And I'm gonna make another marking for myself that these are tremolos too. Because we've been doing tremolos, like that, and tremolos will just give this a, it'll just give it a little shimmer, okay? So now I've got two colors, which is a, sort of a nice change. It's starting to weave a story. Um, now we're moving on to the third one. Well, I've moved down further. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is move that. I've heard a lot of woodwinds. I'd like an, a, a contrast. Who should be doing contrast trumpet? I think for contrast sake, I'm now gonna move the melody to strings. Dun, 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 three, and four, three and four, four, oh, there you go. So better to, so I'm gonna move them there. And for chords, I'm gonna bring in the violas. So just what I'm thinking. Let give the whole woodwind thing a rest. Just stop them. Oh, and you know what? And I'm just gonna make myself a little note here. Um, I'm gonna draw a tremolo uh, with a line through it. That's just to me to know that for contrast sake, I'm gonna stop the tremolos. This will suddenly, this is a nice contrast now. It'll suddenly uh, soften out the whole thing. So, so what it'll give the impression of, because well, this is going, this is going on, and then this. And then it'll just soften off. It, it'll just, it'll just, it'll, you'll see it. It'll, um, it'll soften the whole experience. Um. Okay, so I'm just taking a look now at the score here. Let me just look at this for a second. And I'm watching where my focus points are. Okay, so you just, this is some kind of lead in. It looks like a general, like a little, like one of these. I'm just sort of thinking to myself, it comes from nothing. So we got oboes with a little clarinets doing a little thing, support, that'll be nice against this octave basically. Okay, and then flute, which will be a little stronger just cause flute's real comfortable in this range. Flute's real meaty and comfortable in this range. Drop the woods, I'm not gonna add the woods. I'm not looking to build that way. I'm looking to change contrast and colors. If I had kept the clarinets going, it would, get, it would just be getting meatier and louder and louder, and I don't really want it to get louder. I want the color to change. I want, that's the kind of contrast I want. I don't want to burn up my getting louder yet. And I might want to use that later on. You know what I mean? Don't do, don't, don't, this is the problem with all this epic shit. Don't do it all in the, save it, save it. And you don't need more than this. Do the, the minimum that you, that you can. Oboes, flutes with violins. Violins, uh, you know, are, are moving down into their range. And I'm picking up vi violas. Oh, I wrote that in violin too. Sorry, let's just move those down here. Just, this should be violas. Just a little bit down into their comfy range right here. And let the violins take the Um, so we don't need more than this. This is real efficient and this will be great. And we've left ourselves all kinds of room. We haven't even heard from whole colors yet. Great, save it, okay? Now I talked about that I, um, and now this has started to tell us something. Because what color haven't we used? We have not used any brass. So just to me, this makes the, this a logical next group to grab. 
And I had played, as I recall, right, and I did an answer thing. So what instrument That's horn, man. That's horn. It's a great range. It's a meaty, great range for horn. And a wonderful answer to, to violin stuff. So if this is violas holding our chords and our viol and our strings are going, uh, or whatever. So this is a nice, nice thing here. This is just strings, basically. And then horn answers. That'll be really nice. So, horns will actually. Okay, this will actually be a change of time. Let me just because I'm hearing something in my my mind. I should have marked this is just four four. We'll just do that for now. Just. Um, Checking the time here. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and mark this. So yeah, it'll be this. Dum bum beam. So my thing lined it as improperly, but it just lets me know that the horns are gonna pick up with line. Bum bum bum. And I'll just go to the next page. D da da dum da 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 dum. And that holds D da da da. And I did an answer. So I had played this. Okay, so I got chords holding down here. This is just where my hand went. Um, I've started to build a little bit with moving down the piano, and I've been doing it with strings. I started with strings here, then the string chords moved to here, then they moved to here, and then I moved them to here. I'm just going to keep the trend and move them down to here. And that's also a great combination to go with the horns. So I got horns on the main focus element. Second ele secondary element then would be, I'll move the violas down. Violas are doing the chord here. This is just my sign for chords. And cello is holding the bottom note, three notes. I'll do those two as viola and cello. And I'm also, if I look at the two pages, you know, I mean, just as I start to look at them, you know, I'll see a trend. I'll see a trend that's building Without building dynamics, it's building support. This is chord support. This is sexy. This will work. Da 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 da. There you go. So so now this is da 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 da. So I've got new color, which is nice. Those guys are holding the support. You know, I keep doing this. It's an octaves. What am I going to do next? Let's see. Something like that. So. Okay, so my hands just went here. Something like that. Don't worry about the next word. But again, I'm watching myself now just to see what I did. This is an answer. This could be, uh, I think I'm going to bring this back to wood. So I'm going to follow all of that. I'm playing that in octaves. So I'm going to do that woods in octaves. D, 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 D. And actually, as it hits this note, it becomes nothing because it gets taken over by D, 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 D. 
something like that. So I'm going to do flutes, and uh, this could be just that could be that and clarinets. It could actually be all those guys. I'm going to go ahead and mark that as though this just tells me. I don't know. I'll work out the details. This might be. This is going to be an octaves probably. And I'm not worried about the time. I'm not worried about that. I'm just watching the focus of it. Okay, so I can make myself a little note here. Eight VAs. Okay, again, this is a scratch. I'm just don't worry about the details. This is this is just telling me where the approach is going. And I saw my hand had gone up to here. So I'm going to just sort of indicate that a little bit here. Maybe that's even. Um, it won't be, but I'm just going to go ahead and mark it as though it was violins because this will let me know that it's um, higher. Generally speaking, when I'm making violas, my brain is thinking I'm in this general range, and if I'm here and higher, it's vi violins. This is this is again my. This is just. I'm just sort of looking it out, looking at looking at it from the top down, and it's just a sketch. <laughs> So I've got some strings, horns, answer, nice color. So horns, and the horns are holding here. And now woods take back over, that's what this is indicating, the woods take, o take over. Now what about the actual notes? You know, uh, well, if I was needing to send this to a, an orchestrator, I'd be writing specifically the notes out. This piece is short enough, and I'm going to keep this in my head, that when I go in part three to, to uh, record, I don't need to redo this. I know what I'm doing. So if you need to write down the specific notes in order to remember what you're doing, that's fine. I don't. I'll remember this. This is, this is making a lot of sense to me today. Remember, it's always easier to fix than to create. So this is making a lot of sense. I just don't need more than this. I think the piece went. Which I still like. Um, but as I start to as I as I start to to play and go to the next thing, I'm I'm still paying attention to what my instincts are. And um, I can just tell you what I'm feeling in terms of moving this piece along. Because as I started to play here. I've been doing this. I started to do this thing. Like I feel like finishing out that line, but my brain is thinking, yeah, is there any is there any other contrast opportunities? And I realize I could do this. I could get to this um, cellos can take an answer line, which is now something we have never heard before in terms of the range and who's playing a lead instrument. We've moved it down. So even though we've temporarily gone and reset to the, have the, the woods up here, we're saying, no, 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 this is packaged differently because we're going to answer it. just already tells me, oh, okay, I'm planning, so I'm thinking this thing has more of a swell to it, which everybody loves. Everybody loves to do the big swell, so we're doing a swell in this one. I just, I mean, I just went for that, and now that I'm even catching myself playing, okay, so I'm, now I can tell that I'm now thinking things beyond my ability to actually play with two hands. I need more notes and more of stuff than I can cover, but I'm playing the most important aspects of them. I'm telling myself, oh, this is going to be a big thing. This is big, probably soaring strings and octaves, and this will be real open voice. Whatever it is. I'm starting to inform myself more about the orchestration. Yeah, I like this idea.
so your attention will suddenly be in a whole new place, a new contrast. Let's, let, let's look at that. Um, in fact, I just thought of one way to improve it, too. So, so uh, nice, this will be nice, the horns, dee, 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 ding, 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 and they'll go ahead and they'll hit their final note, whatever it is, and hold it, but it'll become the secondary element because the primary element will suddenly be this thing, which is cellos. Okay, so, and, uh, Strings have been doing chords. I'm going to let them continue to do that. Utilitarian wise, they're just doing that. So, again, as I start to look at the whole thing, I'm seeing the colors moving around. This is interesting. This is moving around. They're moving around. The colors are moving around. And without doing a lot else in terms of the dynamics, which I think we'll do a little push here, I'm helping keep it interesting. Um, no, I just thought of a revision, which was when I get to this, this, this part, um, I did that, which is, uh, you know, which is what I was going to do, right, to get ready for the, what I think I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do, give myself two motions, so rather, so ra rather than just this, I'm gonna give myself that's just a little thing I'm gonna do just to move it along that's just a little thing so I'll change that chord uh, right so it'll be We've crashed into this place where I, I, can't, I can't play, I don't have enough hands to play all the things that I want to do. And I'm going to put this in the category, I do this sometimes, of, okay, like, okay, I don't know exactly what it is because I can't, now I can't play it, and I don't need to, I can work that out. I can start to look and see what's happening here. Um, so, so they're going to be holding a, uh, I'm going to say, oops. And this whole thing is now going to go in the category of a build. This whole, this whole bar is going to be a build to this new thing. It's just sort of generally saying it's going to build. So what's going to happen, what's going to answer this note? Because I'm thinking about the melody. just the melody that I'm playing. That just, so that just, that's just what I answered that with. This is, so, so again, I, this is what I'll do now is I'll play just the focus elements. That's what I was doing. Just following the focus elements, just the melodies. Because this is what the brain is primarily going to la latch on to. So that's, that just gave me that line, which I don't have. And we're building, so this is telling me, this, this doesn't make any sense, I don't know. This is, so uh, this is gonna be horns again. So that's gonna be like a, so now I look for holes. So this is where my melody is going. Horns, little flutes and octaves, cello, and they hit their note, they're, just, they're getting ready for the build note. And now, horn will answer it. And, um, and I don't know exactly, uh, but I'll assume, just for its own sake, that we'll keep the, viol the strings doing their support role.
horns, strings. This finishes out the melody. Still looking at my primaries. So I move on, look a little bit and see what's coming. So. So this is what I started playing next. And again, as, I, as, as these sorts of things go on, what I play inherently on the piano tells me a lot about what I'm gonna orchestrate. So. I'm gonna answer that with strings, this tells me. Well, just the way I'm playing it, and we've swelled and it's bigger, that set tells me that's gonna be strings and octaves. So I'm gonna do a little pickup to that, but I know that violins are gonna hold that. Okay, and I'll just mark this for myself, just if I write it in one violin and two. Uh, and if I write this violin one or two, that's usually just my sign for A, B, A's. So, uh, now we're building. Now, um, in this general context, when I start to do something big like this, oh, I'm sorry, I was, oh, sorry. So, sorry, you saw, the, did you just like look at my belly for the whole time for that? That's fine. Um, so what I wrote was strings and octaves. Okay, so um, when I'm building something like this, and I played, this tells me this is big. I'm doing something kind of big here. I can tell this by my open voicings. That's where I'm going to put that biting element to. Or maybe I'll do it once. So, um, so I know just because I've done this a lot that the, um, we'll have a little bass will enter here, the bass will pick up and be doing, I'll just write, this just lets me know this is low. Okay, low with cellos will be, I'm gonna be doing open voice stuff. Viola's open voice, everybody's nice open voice here. And I'm gonna write, actually those should be black, let's make these black, because you're not really hearing this, you're just feeling these. What I'm saving the second color for is this thing, this, this, which is down here in cellos. And this sound, a very common sound when, I, when you're doing something big. Okay, or this kind of thing. Is uh, cellos. Nice open voice, so that say that's your bass note, your cellos. Um, you can often uh, double that uh, with um, uh, trombones. So I'm gonna just mark that just for myself. I'm just gonna have, they're in the utilitary case, but the trombones are going to be doing some kind of voicing. And in fact, they're gonna follow, they're gonna follow That, whatever it is. Dun, dun. So this is just telling me, I don't know what I'm gonna do with flutes yet or woodwinds, maybe I don't need them. I don't see trumpets, save all that stuff. I don't have an idea for that. I don't need them right now. I'm not worried about that. I'm worrying on the focus. We've gone to a big thing here with big support chords. Now, um, so again, as I just look at it, as I just look at it, I see the colors moving around. They're staying fresh. And we're starting to get things bigger now simply because, I mean, by the way, you could add woodwinds on this. That would be fine. And maybe I will. But right now I don't need to because I'm seeing that this, that this is going to, we've added now trombones doing a thing. And the French horns have, uh, have done a sort of announcement thing. And, you know, I mean, it's, we'll do this just because. Uh, just a gentle... Just a gentle timpani roll into a 
Just a little something, not too big. A lot of times people want to build too big. They want to build in a crash and there's a, who says we need that? We don't need any of that yet. We have a whole new thing. We're now doing nice, powerful strings and octaves. And if I was going to make a general, you know, we have a general trend. This is the first time maybe that we're, hit, we're, hitting, we're hitting forte. And it's been just slowly building from, say, piano over the course of the piece. Okay? Dee, 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 dee. Da, da, da. I never like to do anything exactly twice the same way. So if I do this first thing, by the way, this sort of thing, this is gonna this is gonna kill on orchestra uh, with strings. Uh, we might be in the territory now where some of this like shit starts to sound funny, but it's f f this kills. You'll see. <laughs> but we'll we'll start with this. Now I can just tell you voicing wise. Since this is where my melody is, I tend to leave, if this is where the melody is going to occupy the space, I will not, I will maybe overlap with some chords, but I'm not going to put chords right in the middle of its same range where the melody is. Don't let, I'm going to leave this area free for that melody to cut through. So, uh, so chords wise, this is basically what I'm doing. Trying to play this. It's, uh, um, it's a little stretchy with my hands there, but. Uh, I'm working this out. to that. So I'm seeing my hands basically playing what the strings and trombones are going to do ultimately. And I just have to figure out how to divvy it up, uh, which is not hard because you just pretty much do it linearly. But so I'm going to put this as uh, probably your violas. So in other words, that's bass, cellos, and maybe, maybe that's violas. It's probably what the cello parts will be. do that twice. So again, that just lets me know, and I've already marked it here, that, that the violas are doing chords. Well, that's specifically what they're going to be doing, at least in my brain. That's a general way to fill that out. So I've got a nice dense sound happening. Um, but I, I, like I said, I don't like to do things exactly the same way twice. So. So here's what I'm going to do. So we're basically going to duplicate this bar for the next one. Da -da -da -dee -dee -dee. Let's go to the next one. And we were doing violins and octaves. Because apparently I like to steal everything I do from Star Wars. Dee -dee. Um, uh, and we had strings here. Did I mark them as? Uh, yeah, these are basically utilitarian. Uh -huh. This is just telling me these are chords. Or sorry, that's cellos. Doesn't matter. Okay. And same thing. Trombones are also duplicating that. Um, now, so uh, if we look at these two bars. Da, 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 da. I, I, I don't want it to be exactly the same, exactly the same. Um, I want it to build because my piece goes, my piece, as I recall, I'm trying to make that, not make that mistake again, but. And I think I did. Hold on. Yeah. Which now, as I listen to it, is like I'm stealing thunder. I'm going the wrong direction. 
it should go up. But then instead of going, it should go up. It should, it should keep, I don't know why I went down before. Well, because I thought of it that way, but now that's how I'm hearing it. So we're real open. screaming strings real big real big let it continue because I can't drop there I can't swap out something else for strings up here <laughs> this is I, I mean I can move that to uh, woods and octaves but it's not going to have the same this is let this strings continue um, but I think I'll do but, but these high octaves even if I do it in threes um, that also gets real fatiguing real quick. So I'm gonna stay with an idea that I have, and I'm not gonna make this mistake more times than I did, um, which is to Then I'm just gonna go ahead and mark it just stratosphere. And what I'm going to do, again, just worried about the shape here, is I'm going to mark this, this whole thing, 8VA, real high, but not this one. Because this gets old quickly, too, the super screaming stuff. So what that means is I'm going to be playing essentially... This right, and then I'm going to drop the. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to drop that. I'm just going to do that screaming thing one time. Um, but I'm keeping as I go back a page. I'm keeping mindful of who have I got doing stuff. Okay. Okay. So like I said, I don't like to do things twice. And on this second bar, now that I know what's coming, I know that I've got this part. It's going to go screaming in a second. So this also tell, shows me where the opening air, where the open areas of the piano are, of the, the whole frequency spectrum. Down here, we're all covered. We got strings and trombones just killing it all down here. So we're good all the way up through here. And we're good up here. So for that second time, I notice we have not heard from the horns in a while. Um, so maybe we have an answer to it in the one range right here where we don't have anything. And that will be how we stop it from, uh, from, from getting old. And further, as I look forward, we've already heard this color too. So what about color contrast, or what about ways to, to change up the color? Well, these are strings by themselves in octaves. Why don't we add, why don't we add horns? Let them, because look at the range. Strings are right up here. Well, now you got three octaves, and that's such a soaring range for horns. such a great and with so with the horns and strings together that's a great range and now we've also increased okay well, damn it three four whatever um, so so now we've created a thing where we've increased the uh, We've increased the power of it without really having to increase. I don't have to make this any louder. If the strings continue to just play their, to play their supporting role, if they just continue to just do this stuff, and these guys are doing this, and basses continue, this is, this is just building. This will get more intense because we've jumped the octaves, and it'll get more intense because we've now doubled it with horns. And we saved the horns. I'm always thinking, what you don't, don't, don't have more than you absolutely need. And I'm so glad that I did. Poor woodwinds. We have to figure out what to do with them, but we'll look at that later. Um, uh, uh, 
Maybe I don't need them. Maybe that's why I haven't even thought about them. But in this case, we're increasing, we're increasing the drama just by virtue of bringing in the horns uh, and moving these guys up to that screaming octave. Um, but we have to watch this thing. We have to watch this thing. This, this thing that we had previously covered by trombones down here and cellos. This, because this is the all important thing, which I love, this thing. Now I noticed every time I played this, I moved myself up. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that cue for myself. That's just what I would do. It's not gonna change my notation any, but that's just what I would do. I'm not gonna keep, I'm not gonna keep down here. If my chords were all here, whatever, whatever they were. For contrast's sake, I'll move them up here. I'll move, so violas will probably stay alive in this range. But I'm gonna move everybody else up just to, just to, just to, you know. So it'll, it'll sound like this. It's a very different sound than it was before. It's, it's not as, um, I won't have that, it'll be. It's deliberately opened up a little bit. It's a deliberately smaller, and why? Again, this is this thing that I talk about a lot. Uh, when you wanna do epic, you, you have to have the contrast for it. And I've already said a big thing by swelling into those strings and then going again at the octave. So some part of me is thinking, I gotta reset a little bit. I've gotta reset a little bit to give me some room to push further if I want to. I don't know that I'm going to, but if I'm not, then I kinda of like the idea of, of maybe easing down a little bit too, because maybe we'll end up, I seem to recall that this piece ended with a bracket. Like, so it sort of seems to me that somewhere in the back of my mind this is all gonna taper. Um, so I don't know, but in any case, whether I'm gonna go to another build or whether I'm gonna pull out, if, I'm, if everything just, if, if, we, if we keep staying down here the whole time, then, then I just, the only trick I have is louder. But if I move things up, where it's not quite as meaty as it is down here, then I still can go back to that to make it seem bigger. Contrast, contrast, contrast. I'm thinking about it all the time. This is what's going on in my brain. So, um, okay, so. Uh, string, so we have moved up here. So that means this answer line that I was talking about. Obviously here now. Um, now, so who's left to do that? And they're going to need some power. This is answering the question. Who's left to do this power line with strings killing it? Well, it can't be French horns because they're doing the... So that's trombones. So I just need to mark for myself that uh, that trombones are actually going to be taking the secondary element. This little thing, dee 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 dee. Uh, yeah, whatever it is. Da, da, dee, da. So it's da 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 da. So they're they're really going to answer. You're going to suddenly hear this. That's what the blue tells me. The blue tells me your your attention's going to go secondarily to that. You're listening. Dee 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 dee. dee da, you're really going to hear that. Dee 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 dee. Da, da, you're going to hear that. So what, are we going to do that twice on horns? That's too high for horns to do twice. I mean it isn't, but I I don't want to do it exactly the same way. So what's going on? This is where I'm going to start to now look at what's going on. This is hard to describe what I'm doing, but I see my horns are going. So I'm just checking that against everybody else. So with horns, that means that's the first time. But then what the second time I did? that so I'm just this I'm making a mental note I don't have to write that down but that's what I'm gonna do is have the horns actually do this uh, 
Da, 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 da. I'm going to have him contrast. I'm just making my note, myself a note that just says contrary motion. Um, and the reason I'm just doing this is so that it's not exactly the same thing twice. Because these guys are going to continue to do what they're doing. These guys, everybody, these guys are in a holding pattern. Okay, they're just doing this. And, and if I, and I just, I just learned this a long time ago. When you have something cool, don't do it exactly the same way twice. So it's the idea is the same way twice. So let's change up the colors a little bit. And again, that changes up the colors. So that first time we're going to have this, and that's. And then, then, uh, yeah. Uh, what was I gonna do? Oh yeah. Uh, all right. Nice. Does that sound ugly? Because that's gonna kill on strings. And when that's strings, and this is trombones, and that's horns, that's gonna kill. That's not gonna sound like shit. That's gonna be super sexy. Just you wait, just trust Mike. Strings holding it together down here. And we've increased tension, and tension sets us up for more resolution. So this is how my brain's working. We'll look at the winds, woods later, because I'm in a vibe. Um, so what's next in the piece? This is just soaring. Um, no, I think I did um, something like... Uh, something I don't know but I'm gonna change it now cuz oh yeah I remember now oh yeah sure my first instinct would have been as I'm looking at this just even looking at it my first instinct would have been to build the next one on and I second-guessed myself for some reason I don't know why because that's still the better solution I've done with my hands again I'm learning from myself right now as we do this I was down here then I caught myself moving up here and just a second ago when I played it I moved up again I moved that up and this is telling me again we're, I'm just seeing stuff that I recognize in my own playing I'm setting myself up for something bigger or I'm allowing myself to, um, to bring things down. Because again, it's all about colors. It's all about contrast. So I'm not gonna fight that and I'm not gonna assume that I'm putting my hands here but I actually meant it still down here. This is not one of those times. I just wanna follow it. I wanna follow that to this. And I think I did. But I don't need that. I can just move it up to the other thing. I'm changing the chords a little bit. Uh, just and that's the end. So I'm just making a chord here, but I'm looking at this. So we had strings, super powerful strings with horns and everybody. Oh, Jesus, that's powerful. Then we brought it down one more octave. Just take it easy. Now I played the next line right here. I played it right there. Now we're still pretty big. Everybody's pretty big. We're, in fact, we're only building. So as I look for who's going to play this line, which I don't want to give you the impression that I just 
that I didn't just figure this out as I was saying it, because I just figured it out as I was saying that. <laughs> I was thinking, what the fuck am I going to do with that line? It suddenly hit me. Um, who have I not heard from at all? I have not heard from trumpets. And that's a perfect line for them. Because they can cut against everything that's just happened without having to be super loud and it changes the color. So. So I'm going to mark that. They're going to become the focus of the element. And suddenly. Again, just marking the. So what a breath of fresh air that's going to be. Um, it's like, oh, wow. So suddenly after all of this stuff, even having gone big, because I've saved that, that's going to be nice. Um, Let's see what else is going on. So we have trombones. What has happened to the horns? Uh... And this this moves down to. That strings. I'm going to mark that in basically violas and cellos just for now. Okay. D D D D D D. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Da 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 D da. That's trumpets. And who's doing the chords? I'm dropping cellos for a second, I think. I mean, that might be cellos, right? Hold, holding that D. Maybe that'll be cellos just on the D. I'll just kind of mark that for myself. But I want to bottom out. I don't want there to be anything down there big, I don't think. Uh, I could change my mind. But I'm going to move trombones also. I'm going to let them. Just in my mind, they're going to hold the, They're going to hit a chord. In fact, that's an FP. So this sound will be primarily the sound of trumpets and trombones. I should actually mark them as the blues just to make that clear. It's my secondary element. So, you know, just being mindful of this was strings plus trombones, really. This is strings, you know, with with horns. This is strings plus trombones. This is trumpets and trombones. We've sort of, even though we're going to have some support here from the violas, the focus, the idea, our, our color focus is going to go here. You'll see. That's how I'm going to finish that idea. That'll be, so let me just move on. We'll look at this again later. Da, 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 da. I'm going to let the, let the trumpets continue that, that idea, da, 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 da. which is slightly different notes. And I'm just going to make this chord and make them. They're going to join in octaves. So. I'll show you what I'm doing here. These chords. So trumpets, trumpets. So I'm just I'm following this vibe right now. I'm right here. Trumpets, da 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 da, with basically trombones holding that chord. Trumpets doing the second line, with trombones joining them for the last bit of it. So your focus, in other words, is going to be. Then it's going to be. Uh, So they're going to, just for that little bit, that little last bit of the line, um, they're going to be joined by trombones. 
Um, but how, how do you know how to do that? How do, well, again, if you really look at this, and I'm going quickly, and, uh, and uh, like I said, you want more, I've got hours and hours of classes on this. But I'm always thinking about moving things along, changing, creating contrast, moving colors along, simply bringing in that octave in the trombones for that last part of the line invokes a new sense of motion, a new sense of development. It's a type of development without really having to do anything profoundly different. If the trombones were here while the trumpet is going, and then, and this is just simple stacking of chords. Um, it just creates, it creates a shape. It creates a development without having to I still have very little really going on. Um, maybe that's a disingenuous thing. I mean, I have some stuff going on. But we've moved it from, this is going to seem like a, a quite a, like a build. In fact, you know what? I'll go ahead and this will be the only time I'm going to allow us one. This will be a cymbal crash. This will just be a, I'll just give you one of these. This, this will just be a, this will just be a crash. And yes, we'll do. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, I'm not even going to do a roll. I'm just going to. I'm going to do. Uh, just uh, one of these. It's just one of these, like. You know, on timpani, timpani and piano and uh, cymbal. So right there. So that's really the that's really where the focus is. And I know when that happens, I'm going to want to bring. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna mark this. These guys fade out. These guys fade out to nothing. But the these guys are holding. Uh, what was I doing on violas before? They were just holding chords. Well, you guys, we're gonna continue doing that. They're gonna continue holding their little things here. D d d d d d d. And I'm going to let them do the chord, but unlike these guys who are fading, they're going to continue to hold hold it. So what'll happen is at this bar, you know, the trombones will fade in, and we'll still be left with a nice chord ringing for the violas. And down here. Okay, and that's. And then they're joined. Mm -hmm. And this just tells me that's where the new attention is going to go. String. So as they're holding that chord. That's what that tells me right there. They're holding that chord. There's cellos. Right? And then this tells me octaves. Okay. Um, Okay, so, you know, uh, so what are these? What is everybody else? What, so what happened to the violins? So now I've sort of started to, we've moved forward, and now I've realized, now this is where from a voice leading standpoint, I might go back and just check a little second and see. So I had strings, we're all doing all their, they're being all, all cock out here. Um, and then uh, we had, Now, um, I can just tell you, as I, one of the things I talked about when I talked about going to the, trum the trumpet color is I said that uh, it can hold its own against strings in this volume range, which it can. So I've been real big, right? and then we're doing bigger. You know, I'm, I'm 
I'm, I'm, this is not, we haven't dumped in terms of power. That's not at all what's happened. Um, that's why I'm choosing a uh, trumpet there. So this next part is gonna be hard to describe how and why I'm hearing what I'm hearing, but. With this kind, with these sorts of elements in such a powerful range, um, I'm actually in my brain for violins during all of this. I'm hearing a. Uh, they're going to be built. Violins are going to build up the whole time. I'm just going to outline the chord, and they're going to, um, and they're going to finish. This is just. I'm, this is what I'm going to have them do. Uh, when we get to the final chord, uh, they're going to hit together. This is actually going to be secondarily. Violins will join them in a chord. So what I'm this I'll just show I'll just draw it for you. This is what's happening. You're almost not going to hear this. You're going to feel this. This sort of I'll just write the things. It's just me. Just I get what this means. This means da -da -da -da, and it's going up and it's going up and it's going up and it keeps going up. It's going up. It's going up. Uh, bang! That's just what's going to happen. And it, the whole thing is building. And you're not really gonna. You're gonna feel this more than hear this. And so this will, in fact, right at the end, a very typical thing to do. Maybe at the very end, uh, and and let let everybody up here join for that too. Okay, so the very last bit of the line. So that's what's going to happen is this as these elements. Where is it? This is this is this is by the way is this is this is forte. Dare I say that? I hardly ever do that because it's unmusical. But the idea is that this is still going to allow this all to build. And this building is why I don't need, like, you could put a suspended cymbal and you could put a timpani roll. Um, but um, I think it's sexier to let these guys do it and they'll read better. And now I'm just going to check to see what I did with the bass. Just because I'm looking for my holes. So I know what violins are moving to this. This is also very common. They're doing screaming stuff. Whatever that's going to be. I'll work all those notes out later. Um, I would probably bring the bases in. Oops, wrong page. So I would probably bring the bases in uh, just for the last bit. And of course, these guys are going to be in here. Let's see. Uh, same thing. As it builds, let let these guys come in, and they'll do this too. The bases will join the second half for this. And then dump out for this and come back for that. So I'm just looking. I'm just looking again. And these guys can dump. And now we've come back down to really put all the attention right here. And that's the point of these of of the focus stuff is to is to just double check that where my attention is is cool. the trumpets, whatever it is. And then your attention will go here. I'm going to go back a little bit and just take a look at this. But, you know, in a lot of ways, if we just look at the art elements of it, look at the sparseness of the page, essentially. Okay? And look at the ways the colors are moving around. They keep moving. Your attention is going. Secondary elements are, everybody's repurposing themselves. There's something missing here. I can feel that. We'll look at that. 
Moving it down here, moving it up here, moving it up here, nice big thing, moving it down here. So if you knew nothing else about this piece, if you knew nothing else, you would know that its colors move around and stay interesting. I say interesting advisedly, but you know what I mean. Um, interesting, at least in far, as far as this piece. That's always a good sign. And so again, what I'll just do now is like, for example, we said, you know, well, what about the, uh, you know, we talked about, and we also had the last chord to do, but that should be easy. Um, you know, we talked about uh, what, what should the woodwinds be doing? Well, look, uh, at this point, this is how I generally approach these sorts of things. I have seemed to be okay with forgetting about the woodwinds. They, seemed, they, they really held the whole beginning of the piece, and then we moved into strings and brass. I think the very end of the piece, we're probably gonna have a little woodwind color in there as a bracket, but I've seemed to be okay with neglecting them a little bit as we've been going, and I love woodwinds. I, don't, I know everybody hates woodwinds now for some reason, but I love them because you can do many, so many things with the colors of them. But, so that means that if they're going to continue, it must be in a supportive role. They must be playing supportive roles, ones that are actually so supportive that they're in the black category, and I've hardly missed them. But in an orchestrational standpoint, will help to uh, glue things together and do some other things. So I'm just going to look because uh, da -da 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 -da. nice break from them. They were so dominant here that I like this break. This is just so you remember from the beginning. And strings. Here's where we are. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. Um, then we move to this brass color. And then they were answering and they played a role here again. This is obviously going to be some kind of some kind of string thing here D, with a pickup. With a pickup, there's going to be a pickup here. Dum, da, so there's going to be these guys are going to be doing something. I can just feel this. Just, you're just going to have to take my word for it. Um, but I don't think we're going to do anything with the woods here. I think we're going to let them just be. Um, again, you could absolutely double them here, but I, no, I didn't. I wasn't compelled to do that the first time. Uh, but it's um, B. Let's see. Uh, let's see. You know what you could do? You know this little thing down here. You could. I'm going to put this in brackets because you could do this. You could have horns double that just to make it stick out a little bit more. But you got trombones on it, and I don't think you have to do that. Less is more. This is, da, this is soaring, streaming, da, 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 da. oh no, this is the really big one. Um, da, 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 You might, here's another, so here's what they could do. They could come in here. This is, um, I'll just write coal strings, which just means that in one way or the other, um, they're essentially, doubling this stuff. This too, this could easily be, you could easily add clarinets on this if you wanted to. I think that's a thing that it, you'd be fine without it. It'd be very standard to do and at the end of the line, very you could just then at the end of the line here, but you just add everybody to do it just so it's all everybody together. And bassoons and all that stuff, uh, the shortest way, also notice we have not written in tuba. Generally speaking, as I'm doing a sketch score like this, my assumption is that, is that as this builds, when the, when the trombones start to play, uh, um, when the trombones really start to do their thing, the tuba is also doing its thing. It's basically doing what the bass is doing. It's a very standard thing. So it looks like I've neglected them, but the essentially it's just doing, I'm just sort of scanning ahead here. It's just, it's essentially doing what bass is doing. Okay. And whatever it's doing, when it gets big, uh, what it's doing, you can also put in the bassoons, contra bassoons if you want. 
Um, by the way, this is my custom score pad. You can use any score pad that you want. Some people like to do sketch scores, but by having it all fully laid out like this, it allows me to see it better. Um, uh, I, this, I don't know if this will help you. My, you can ask for this maybe. I used to get these from Judy Green Music. Um, and uh, my code for this custom template is PS1559. That's Paul Samuel 1559. Um, all print music now, I think, or all music print, or print all music, or music all print, or print music all print music now does all this. And they may still have my template. I have so many reams of this that I don't, haven't ordered it in years. But anyway, from my Judy Green, that was if you want this exact score pad. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so. Um, so anyway, so, so yeah, so I, again, I'm not even writing in the bassoons and the tuba stuff because for me, I take that for granted. In, in a short sketch like that, that's essentially what they'll do. And so, so just, just as we sort of look at it, we seem in pretty good shape. We can look at the last chord in a second. But, uh, but what I'll often do is just, just now go back and just play the red parts. Just play the red parts and just make sure we're we're still cool. Because it really should make sense on its own. from memory, I'm not following the score, sorry. Um, I should do that again, so we're, up, we're here. Right there. Then up to, up to woodwinds. There's. Or no. And so really even with nothing else being played, without any of the chords underneath or any of the other supported stuff, um, you can sort of hear that the piece almost makes a kind of sense. That's always a good, that's always a good sign. Um, and if I start to put any of those chords behind it, just to give it whatever. something. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'll work it out. Ooh, something missing. Something missing. Just caught it. Dude, second time. So first time. See how we got this horn entrance, this screaming horn entrance, to go with the... I like to warm the horns up a little bit. 
I like to warm them up before having them hit a D and jump into it. So what I'm gonna do on this second time, because I don't like to do things exactly the same way second time, the second time uh, when they're over here, uh, I'm gonna have them do, so it'll be. It's a, a nice conspicuous note, the third. So as they're doing this, and that's where your ear will actually go. Dee -dee 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 -dee. You'll suddenly catch the well, it'll be a secondary element. And then the horns are sort of warmed up. And it gets you, it's, this is a nice little push, you'll see, you'll see. Definitely check in for part three to watch how this fleshes out because we are at a place right now where without having a lot of experience doing this, um, it becomes very difficult to internalize and hear everything that I'm hearing with the clarity and separation and interest that I'm hearing. You're taking my word for it a lot. And I hope this video hasn't been frustrating because of it, but it might be. But if it has been, then you're gonna feel better in part three when you see why and how it all comes together. Um, and, I, and, and, and on the other side, I sort of hope it has been a little bit so that you learn that, um, that there is a world of difference between writing on piano you know, and, and performing with an orchestra, that the colors don't translate on piano exactly the same way. And that in some ways, part of what we have to learn to do is learn to interpret and go, I know this sounds like shit, but this will actually sound fine and know it as clearly and as confidently as I know it just because I've done this so long. Um, and so so if there's part of this that, that you're like, this, I don't think this sounds, this doesn't, just wait so that you can put this in your brain for, yeah, there's shit on piano doesn't sound right, but it sounds great when you put it on strings. And that's true for so many different families and so many different colors. Um, but um, you know, I know this is a difficult process to, uh, to watch and understand, and I blazed through it. We were at only an hour and a half, which I know maybe seems fast or slow, but it's super fast. Um, and you know, the contrast between this and one of my master classes is, is that I'm not taking five hours to explain it, <laughs> which I do, and that's the point of the classes. Um, but, um, but in this case, I hope that you're at least getting a top-down view of kind of what's moving my decisions around. Now, we didn't do the last chord, um, which I guess we can just do. I mean, I know what it's going to be, I think, because um, we've come way down. And so the last chord will be, uh, you know, it'll be this. It'll be nice this, nice open voicing. Everybody's real open voicing. Um, and... Um, And uh, I think well, this will be a point in which we just take a, like maybe maybe flutes or uh, flutes and clarinets maybe even maybe oboes and like just have them do a tension release thing at the end. So this thing at the end, they may be the ones just going or even up here. Oh, well, that might be interesting. I can do either one. But they think that it'll, they'll just sort of round it out and, um, and we'll even have 
a little, we'll bring in a little harp just for this thing. Just ding, 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 ding. Just a little something here to round this out as it finishes. And we'll, again, look at this as we get to the end. This will be the end. Okay, um, again, part three will, uh, will consist of us taking this um, and uh, putting it in the, the computer and playing it out. Now, however, one interesting thing to note is I just wrote little scribbles and colors things, which is nonetheless extremely useful to me. And, and if I'm on a super tight deadline for where I'm performing the thing in the computer in the end, then this is exactly what I'll do. And I'll go right to the, to the, work, to the workstation and, and work out the details there. Uh, but if I had taken the time to actually notate these specific notes out and work these runs out, at the most, maybe that same hour and a half to two hours that I spent on this video would have been as long as it took me to do the real version, which could then go to an orchestrator for cleanup and a couple of other things, depending, or, or you know, and, and go to performance. Which means that if, if that whole thing took about 10 or 15 minutes to write, and then the next day took basically an hour and a half to two hours, let's say three hours total to do. That's three hours from having absolutely no idea to ready to go to uh, the orchestrator. And maybe four hours with ready to go to the stands. Now I don't know how long the total piece is, minute maybe, I don't know. Um, but, but the point is that uh, uh, it, the, the performing it is usually the part that takes the most time. But the actual composing, when you've got your skill set together, this is not, it's just not, if you can do a minute of music in three or four hours, that means you can do two minutes in eight. And if you can do two minutes of fully fleshed, realized, practically ready to go on the stands, or at least ready to go to the orchestrator music in, in eight hours, then you're at John Williams speed. And uh, he knows what he's doing. So, so that's just a, uh, just a little gauge for the time. Um, again, um, hope that you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for part three tomorrow where we do my favorite part of it, which is clumsily hacking it out on instruments that don't even remotely approximate what a real orchestra sounds like, though they try. They sound good, but it's gonna be a real bitch to make this thing sound and feel the way it would feel with a real orchestra. So join me for that struggle tomorrow, which we'll try to make fun. Thanks.